Welcome to season two of Let's Talk, a podcast for women from the Gospel Coalition Podcast Network. My name is Jackie Hill Perry, and I am here uh, with my friends uh, who are also saints, Jasmine Holmes and Melissa Kruger, to talk about how to apply biblical wisdom to everyday life. This season, we're going to be talking about people pleasing, uh, the holiness of God, my goodness, fighting fear and anxiety, and a whole bunch of other topics. Uh, before we start today, Today's topic, however, I'm going to let you each introduce yourselves. So, Melissa, uh, tell us about you. Um, my name is Melissa, right? And I'm married to Mike, and I have we have three kids: um, Emma, John, and Kate, who range in age from 14 to 20. Mm-hmm. So, there, I've got I've I've got I graduated one teenager, got two teenagers, and a college student, and I work. For the Gospel Coalition and Women's Initiatives. Fancy. That's me. Awesome. What about you, Jasmine? I am Jasmine. Um, I'm married to Philip. We have two boys, Walter Wynn and Ezra mm-hmm. Langston. They are four and almost two. And I am a writer and a teacher and an all around busy person. Hmm. Sounds fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, my name is Jackie, as I've already said. Uh, last name Hill Perry without the hyphen. Uh, I am married to a guy named Preston from Chicago. We have two children, Eden, who's five, Autumn, who is two, and another baby who should be here mm-hmm. in three weeks. And so, uh, yeah, I'm doing this very, very, very pregnant. Uh, I I would love to go into labor at any point during this podcast. <laughs> that, take it to the hospital. I, I mean, that would be... We can help you breathe. Uh, that, that would be amazing <laughs> to, to just go in now. Anywho, Jasmine, what are we going to talk about today? Today, we are going to be talking about our own spiritual heroes. Mm. And I am really excited about this topic because I love to talk about spiritual heroes. I think ever since I was a little girl, when I was, um, I read The Hiding Place when mm. I was 11, and Corey Ten Boom became my all time spiritual hero, which is common. So, so how would you that. define spiritual hero? Like a person who helped you spiritually? Yes. The way that <laughs> so the way that I related to Corey in particular was her personality resonated with me, which then made her acts of spiritual like her her life as a spiritual giant felt more accessible to me because her life story and personality resonated with me. Mm -hmm. So somebody who has done amazing things for Christ, somebody who has led um, an exemplary life, but I think also somebody who you relate to Mm -hmm. in some kind of way as well. So Corey's like, just the fact that she did all of these, and for anybody who doesn't know who Corey Ten Boom is, woman from the Netherlands during World War II, ended up hiding um, Jewish people in her home and being sent to a concentration, first prison for a long term, then to a concentration camp with her sister, Betsy. Ended up getting out, living a long, fruitful life of ministry, died on her birthday in her 80s. Mm -hmm. And so never got married, never had kids. And I love her story and I loved her because I related to just the constant grappling that she did with faith. Her sister, Betsy, was the quote-unquote, more faithful one, the one who was, like, thanking God for fleas Mm -hmm. in Auschwitz because the fleas let them, you know, the guards were afraid to come into the barracks because they were so dirty. So then the women were able to, like, worship God and do Bible study. So Betsy's like, thank God for these fleas. And Corey's more like, I just hate the fleas. Mm -hmm. And so I related a lot more to her in the story and yeah just ended up reading a lot of her a lot of her books a lot of her things couldn't get enough of her and she really inspired me in my own walk from a really young age um so first question is who is someone from history who inspires you guys i just read a new biography called becoming elizabeth elliott and i have to say she was kind of the first christian biography i ever read was through the gates of splendor Mm -hmm. and I don't think personality-wise, she and I would be alike. But what I really respect about her um, is just her willingness to look at life not for self-fulfillment, but almost for self-death. And she lived it. And so I think she's a much more direct person than I would ever be. But mm-hmm. I kind of res- I like direct people, even though I'm not always one of them. But I kind of respect them. Like, she tells it like it is. She comes at you she'll say it and whether you agree with her or you don't Mm -hmm. at least you know where she stands and to me she wrote a lot about womanhood 
but she was a really tough woman. Mm -hmm. I mean, she went into the jungle after her husband had been killed and she shared the gospel with the exact people who had killed her husband. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's so brave. Mm -hmm. She took her two-year-old daughter into this tribe who is known for being a pretty murderous tribe. Mm -hmm. And she, she, for the sake of the gospel... And I'm like, wow, you know, it's kind of that. But yet at the same time, what I loved about this biography is it really brought out the real side of her, the angsty side of her, the things she was struggling with. Mm -hmm. I like portrayals of heroes where they're really human. Mm -hmm. And I love that about Corey Ten Boone too. You she told her her weaknesses, and I find that encouraging in the sense of God can use me in spite of my weaknesses, mm-hmm. too. So the fact that we're all mixed bags rather than no one here's perfect. But what I also love about heroes, I can look back and say she ran the race. Mm-hmm. She finished it well. You know, and she went through a lot of different struggles. Like Elizabeth Elliot didn't just lose her first husband. She lost her second husband. Mm-hmm. And then she stayed married to her third husband, but then she suffered from dementia later in life. And, you know, you see a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And you say, okay, the goal is not to do these amazing things for God, but just to live faithfully. And so I love that. Like Corrie ten Boone didn't, she would have just been a watchmaker. Yep. In um, Holland. Holland. Yes. I was like Amsterdam somewhere. Mm -hmm. She would have just been a watchmaker. Mm -hmm. But when life came to a head, she made the faithful choice to, you know, as Daniel said, display strength and take action. Mm-hmm. You know, she made the godly choice in the life circumstances that were given to her. It wasn't something she chased, but when life happened, she rose because of what God was doing in her to help people. Yeah. I just love that. Definitely. Mm-hmm. I was thinking while y'all were talking, because a lot of the people that I consider to be a hero are people I know, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. um, and I've been able to like observe their life up close. But the, the, the main person that keeps coming to mind, honestly, is Martin Luther King Mm -hmm. Um, and I I wouldn't have said that a decade ago Mm -hmm. I've said it as I've began to investigate him outside of what school taught me Mm -hmm. Um, and reading his books reading beyond the you know I have a dream speech and paying attention to the things he said and seeing how much his faith and what he knew about God and the scriptures fueled his his zeal of justice and alleviating oppression as much as he could because if you imagine this dude's life he was under immense stress at all times (laughs) you know but he just kept moving because he knew it was the right thing to do um but he was also brilliant the dude was smart he got a phd in his 20s how can that not be heroic (laughs) so i just even think when you read his stuff and listen to him speak you hear someone who is highly highly educated Mm -hmm. but also humble enough to work uh for the least of these so yeah i think that also brings up a really good point that like representation matters with heroes Mm. I, growing up, my heroes were all white evangelical mm-hmm. women. I read Elizabeth Elliot, loved Cory Ten Boom, Mary Slessor, mm-hmm. another missionary, Amy Carmichael, another missionary. Like all of the names that I knew were names of white women who had done incredible things for God. And in that, I kind of grew up thinking that as a black woman who loved God, I was um, an exception Hmm. to the role. Um, And so only now as an adult have I been able to really seek out and find heroes who look like me, heroes who show me that God has been working in the lives of people of every ethnicity, every tribe, tongue, nation across time for millennia Mm. just some of their stories have been lost yep i think that's what's going to be so wonderful about heaven Mm -hmm. there are so many stories we haven't heard Mm. and we'll be recounting let me tell you what was happening here Mm -hmm. that you didn't know was happening Mm -hmm. and actually that's why i'm excited are you willing to share a little bit about what you're working on yeah i'm I'm working on a book about um, black women in christian history whose names i did not know before i started researching them and who i'm really excited to introduce to other people and it's been interesting work because the things about these women are not super accessible. Like a lot of times people will be like, can't you just give me like an Amazon list or can't you just, and I'm like, no, cause it's going to be an $85 rare book mm. or a $250 rare book, or it's going to be read a dissertation and then find something in the footnotes and then go hunt that down somewhere else. So it's, it's been a treasure hunt for sure, because these stories have not been told on a popular, popular level. I think a lot of academics mm-hmm. know the names of these women. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and that's great and academics are awesome and I'm grateful for them but bringing them to a more popular level is something that I'm really excited about I'm excited too I mean I I love reading stories and learning from people's lives and I just I, I find more and more especially I mean I think the reality for all of us as women is stories are less told mm-hmm. I mean yeah. it's just the reality all the presidents are men mm-hmm. so they everybody does a biography about a president mm-hmm. yeah. you know I mean it just happens it's not it's not like anyone is necessarily even doing anything malicious mm-hmm. it's just hard sometimes to find people who look like you or you know whatever especially in different contexts i mean i've never read a history about black women mm-hmm. and, and, I, and i'm thinking that might be why I, I'm, I'm lost for words even when it comes to having mm-hmm. spiritual heroes mm-hmm. just because there aren't many that i know about or even knew about that whose life looked like mine for me to say oh i want to be like that that isn't to say that someone has to look like me and be like me and act like me to inspire me because obviously i have a ton of inspiration from different places mm-hmm. yet at the same time there is a different kind of motivation you receive when you can read a book uh with someone that sounds like your grandma and say man i want to be like that yeah. when i grow up you know so i think what jasmine is creating obviously will be very helpful for the same hopefully. yeah ain't need, no hopefully it need, will we need them we yeah. i mean I, I think there can be in our generation a little bit of a there's no heroes out there everybody's equal everybody's just messed up or or whatever but mm-hmm. i need to be spurred on i oh, think yeah. of hebrews 11 when there's this cloud of witnesses mm-hmm. cheering us on in the race there's something for me looking to what someone else has withstood to say i can i can yeah. withstand too yeah. we all need we need them i mean the, the, the scriptures are filled full of narratives and stories of people who have gone through all types of craziness and still love jesus mm-hmm. despite mm-hmm. that helps us to endure you know to look at even jesus jesus is a spiritual hero he's our god he's our savior he's our lord but he's also a hero yeah. <laughs> you know and yeah. so how do you guys define hero because jackie you know that I'm always thinking for the devil's advocate listeners who are going to be like, MLK, really? <laughs> no, when I said well, it, I was like, somebody know. tuned out of this podcast yep, already. Yep, yep. It's like, don't you <laughs> Unsubscribing know? now. XYZ about his life. Even Elizabeth <laughs> Elliot. I read some things about Elizabeth Elliot and Jim Elliot where people were like, uh, actually, they're not heroes because XYZ, ABC. How do we respond to people who say... Your hero can't be insert person because whatever sin disqualifies them. This is complicated. Mm -hmm. And it's complicated because, yes, you have someone like Martin Luther King who made statements about the Trinity uh, and God um, while in school that are problematic Mm -hmm. right you have the reality that he was a man who stepped out on his wife you do have those realities and part of me does want to say all of our heroes are broken which is true yet at the same time i'm equally triggered when someone highlights and exalts a jonathan edwards Mm -hmm. whose past is full of you know slavery or, or what did he, he had slaves right he had one yeah he had a slave mm-hmm. and then he like had like a bill of sale on the back of a mm-hmm. sermon mm-hmm. uh outline so there's this tension where it's like yeah yeah heroes really are broken mm-hmm. and is there a standard or is there a line to draw in the sand for what should make one hero worth following and another hero worth denying does right. that make sense well because so, sometimes you do th- learn about things that discount the person's contribution yeah. So I think about George Whitfield and, you know, we look at into the second great awakening and we're like, man, George, dude, there's actually some real evangelical baggage that you yeah. brought into the second great awakening. It wasn't just about people being saved. Mm. And also you made you like petition to make Georgia a slave state when it wasn't a slave state before. And also so then you start I think there's there's two different ways. There's there's the one where it's like, man, I learned this about uh, I learned this thing about this person that doesn't directly impact the contribution that I was grateful for. Mm -hmm. and so i can still be grateful for that contribution or you learn things that do impact the contribution that you thought that you were grateful for the people to grapple with because even looking into these women that i've been looking into like they're amazing and then they'll say something that's just you know you're like okay i i see that that 
society's thoughts about black people impacted you, mm-hmm. even though you're a black person. That's mm-hmm. crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, or you'll look into somebody's life and you'll see unfaithfulness or you'll look, in, you'll look deeper into somebody's life and you'll see unkindness. So it is, it's one of those. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. And I also wonder, what am I completely being shaped by my culture mm-hmm. that I'm totally blind to? Yeah. That we'll all look back and they'll be like, oh, they watched reality TV. Can mm-hmm. you believe that they watch or whatever mm-hmm. it might be? I don't know. You know, I mean, I think there are certain, when I look back in history, people just accepted certain things that wouldn't be acceptable mm-hmm. today. Yeah. And it's hard to even know how to interpret some of those things. But my greater fear is what am I completely blind to today? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I just wonder, you know, what is culturally so blinding Mm -hmm. to me that I'm living in a sinful way that I'm so seeped in my culture, I don't even know how sinful it is Mm -hmm. because we just accept it. Which to me adds another level of complication because is it, I can accept you as a hero if there is evidence of repentance Mm -hmm. or evidence of change Mm -hmm. in thought. Because I think even when you read Martin Luther King, you see there was a change in thought patterns. Jonathan Edwards, Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean Don't. David, right? Like yeah, even right. Bathsheba, okay. hot mess. But he came back and he was like, "Lord, against you and you only have I." Like he Moses. understood. Yes, Peter, Actually, everybody. Melissa, could you um, turn to Hebrews? What is it? Eleven? Is that the cloud? I'm trying to think of some of the names Rahab. that are mentioned here. Yeah, oh. Rahab's in there. There's a mess. Um, <laughs> Noah's in there. Yeah, and he was a, dr- well, I mean, a drunk. Abraham. Abraham gave his wife to the king twice. I mean, <laughs> I'm like Abe, really. <laughs> two times father abraham i'm like i've been reading the bible through this year and i'm just like seeing all this stuff jump out even i'm like hey really? why are we doing this and then it talks about like sarah and the way that she treated hagar was bogus awful because it was her idea and then she was like mean towards her later mm-hmm. and then moses killed the man yes he did mm-hmm. yeah there's just i'm like i'm just looking Rahab. at these names rahab's in here jacob esau isaac <laughs> Yeah, Jacob. Jacob. Ugh. I mean, he played. I mean, Still, his brother like, playing his brother yeah, playing his like tricks his blind dad into giving him a blood. Like that's just cold blooded. And it's they're crazy. they're called the Hall of Fame of yes. Faith. Yes. <laughs> We're not in the way, and it's interesting the way that Hebrews paints them because Hebrews doesn't mention any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like it's just like these are the things that you did hmm. that were faithful. These are the things mm-hmm. that have stood. Like. These are the things, the stuff that melted away is dross. Mm. That's not here. What's here is mm. the the gold, the stuff that remained, the stuff that can be attributed only to the presence of the spirit in your life and not to you is the stuff that's left over, which mm. is like... Isn't that such a hopeful picture of it's heaven? It's incredible. That, that's, why. that's what we'll be telling each other, yeah. like the gold and the other will be washed yeah. mm-hmm. fully. And even, you know, I think about First Corinthians where it talks about those stories have been included so we wouldn't set our hearts on evil as they did you yeah. know and that's when it says no temptation has seized you except what's common to man but i do think it's helpful even to look at our, our heroes mm-hmm. so to speak and learn from their failings yeah, yeah. and say i don't want to be like that that's like true. there's a good lesson and even paul said follow me as much as i'm following christ mm-hmm. or something that's my paraphrase mm-hmm. i think it's in yeah. there somewhere but there's this sense i think with all of our heroes we follow them as they're following christ yeah. but when we see them stepping outside of that you know we we don't say i don't justify well so and so thinks this is okay so therefore i think it right is okay. mm-hmm. right you know but i think I, I do think a lot of these people that i call my heroes it is their faith mm-hmm. like i'm looking at their faith and what it propels them to do in a world and that i can seek to emulate mm. Absolutely. like following god clinging to him you know mm-hmm. but i think with all of them we're gonna have to say there are parts of their life we want to be warned by yeah yeah, yeah. A hero is not a person who we're giving a wholesale stamp of approval to. I love this person because everything that they did was right and amazing and wonderful. I remember I, um, since you uh, since you added yourself with MLK, uh, Jackie, I will go one step further. <laughs> okay. Um, I have a Malcolm X poster in my office. And I had a friend who was like, uh... uh. <laughs> why what do you have that heathen man hanging up in your office <laughs> but i was just explaining to my friend the reasons why i enjoyed the autobiography of malcolm x he's not a spiritual hero at all because we don't even have the same religion right um but 
that doesn't mean that I couldn't appreciate his thoughts, couldn't appreciate his integrity in certain areas, couldn't appreciate things about him. So I do feel like sometimes as believers, we get a little bit too caught up in wanting to have perfect, pristine heroes, but on our own terms. So it is okay for one believer to like Thomas Jefferson because he was a really great thinker Mm -hmm. and he was a wordsmith and he was just a fascinating man who had an incredibly interesting life. And it's okay for them to overlook certain things about him, like Sally Hemings or his other slaves. But then it's not okay for another Christian to like MLK because Mm -hmm. of the inconsistencies in his life. So they do think that we tend to pick and choose the things that we accept from heroes based on what we're most comfortable with Mm. and sins that we're able to kind of look over a little bit more easily. Um, But that's just a theory. That's a great theory that I'm working on. I think it's a right one. Um, But there's more than heroes from history. What are some heroes that you guys have or who are some heroes that you guys have who you actually know in person, someone in your life or in your past who has been a hero to you? Someone I would say has been a hero in my own life was actually um, someone I met in high school. She was a teacher at public school and um, she ran an FCA at my high school and that's really how I heard the gospel. But now what I'll say is she's still doing, she still works in public school. And one reason I consider her such a hero is because she is doing things in the public school that I think is really changing lives in tremendous ways. No one would know her. Mm -hmm. She's not famous. She's not Christian famous, but she's faithful. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what I look at her life. She, She runs this whole program for kids, many of whom have no one in their family who's ever gone to college. And a lot of these kids, so, you know, they're in high school and they see no nothing in the future for education and so what she does is she has this whole system where she takes a whole group of kids to college visits Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of their parents wouldn't know what to do because they didn't go to college themselves so they don't know where to take them but you have to earn the trip and the way she gets you to earn the trip is by doing your homework coming to class every day not skipping you know she has this whole system worked out so one of the kids in the program had a 0.7 gpa just by doing the program and getting his homework done he went up to a 3.2. He had no college aspirations, got a scholarship to college. You know, and some of it is just creating a vision that you can do this and you can Mm. go. And so when she tells me the stories, I'm like, you're my hero because you're doing it quietly. You're doing it within the system that you're in. You're not saying public schools have to change. We have to do this. She just, she's working within the system she has and she's making a difference. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of a hero. It's like Corey Tim Moon was in the system she was in. Mm -hmm. It wasn't right. It wasn't good. And she rose in that moment Hmm. to do what needed to be done. So sometimes I think we think we have to change everything before we can do anything. And for me, a hero is someone who says, I'm here in this moment and I'm going to do what's right. Yeah, Yeah. for sure. I think I figured it out. So it's not an individual per se, but so I have two friends uh, and both of their grandmothers are super similar and I don't even know their grandmothers, but I'm inspired by them. Um, And I say that because they both talk about how their grandmothers were the most faithful people that they knew Mm -hmm. and how um, growing up obviously in a in a Jim Crow South and not having the same access to education uh, in the same way or the same freedoms and privileges but how they were still very literate and uh, what's the word were able to handle the scriptures um, without even being taught the scriptures just really dependent on the Holy Spirit Mm -hmm. for context and for interpretation but even what they read was true to them in every single way and how they prayed all the time and how there was always a scripture on their tongue and how they always wanted their children to follow in the way of Jesus and how they trusted Jesus to be everything that Jesus promised and how they lived this life until they died 70s 80s I guess anytime I hear a story about a saint being faithful in the day-to-day that extends into the end of their days it makes me feel like that's what I want to be Like, I don't want to be this person who just has all these, like, you know, books and clever phrases. I just I just want my children Mm -hmm. and my grandchildren Mm -hmm. to be able to say, I know Jesus because I watched my grandmother Mm -hmm. and she loved him until the day that she left. Mm -hmm. To me, those are the heroes that, like, exemplify everything that I want to be. I love that. And there's that integrity. 
Yeah. Like they're they're who they are, not because they're up in front of ten thousand people, but they're in the closet praying. Mm-hmm. Like to me, that's that's a hero. I mean, like you can't always see that mm-hmm. because you don't know because they don't talk about mm-hmm. themselves. And it's simple, but it's powerful. Even when I think about my aunt, who I think was a, su- a super important figure as to like the reason I know Jesus. Like I would walk past her room. I'm sure I said this before, and she would be singing the Psalms mm. to herself. Mm. She's not trying to impress nobody. Mm-hmm. Twitter wasn't no thing. She ain't had no Instagram. Like, look at me singing Psalm 27. <laughs> like she, <laughs> and, and she was singing it back to God. Yeah. Those simple, just worshipful acts of faithfulness are the things that stick with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think about Philip's grandmother. Um, I don't have a super close relationship with either one of my grandmothers, but Philip loves 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 lydia may jones oh my i love goodness. her name she sounds oh like she can my cook goodness and she can and mm. raised so many children mm. and grew up sharecropping and all of her kids went to college and have had really successful lives i mean she just is a hard working wonderful woman without whom my husband would not be who he is mm. today and he's a fantastic mother fantastic aunt. i mean it's it's so interesting because i grew up in an intact upper middle class family mm-hmm. and i have a great dad I have a great mom. I just, I'm really blessed. But when I looked at, when I would have looked at all of the ingredients to my husband's household, I may have thought like, oh, that's subpar. Like, Mm -hmm. is he going to be okay? He's going to make it out all right. Very matriarchal family, Mm -hmm. you know, and they just surround each other with so much love and so much support. And one of the major reasons, like anytime anybody asks us, are y'all ever going to move out of Mississippi? We can't. Like we have too much family. We have too much support. And that the kind of woman, like I want to be the kind of woman who is like a magnet Hmm. to her family because she's such a support structure Hmm. and that really is how philip's family from his grandmother on down has always been Hmm. which is something that i admire as someone who had a really intact nuclear family like the mom dad you know but as far as extended family goes didn't have that huge communal family structure so i love that the women in his family have been able to craft that and that's something that's really grown more important to me through knowing them i love that hero family heroes Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is that the way you say it familiar Mm -hmm. familial Familial that's the better word familial here i'm trying girl girl. i'm next to these teachers you know (laughs) trying to pull out my thesaurus uh is there a common denominator in the people who've shaped your lives like when you think about the things that stand out to you as heroes i think for me when i started working on the book um about the black women 80 percent of them ended up being teachers Hmm. interesting Hmm. I kind of felt like (laughs) Bible teachers or just teachers Teachers, in general, teachers in general. And most of them were both Mm -hmm. Um, like missionaries who came back home and became teachers or teachers who were sent by the American Missionary Association to be teachers or like Mariah Fearing Hmm. was a teacher in the Congo. Mm -hmm. So like it's but a a lot of them are teachers, which I don't think is a coincidence. And Hmm. that's just the kind of person that I um, gravitate towards. I mean, even Corey Ten Boom had an element of like Sunday school teaching, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. there's just that element in the people that I that I gravitate towards. I think I gravitate towards uh resolve. Like when you see people who are committed to loving Jesus no matter how difficult it gets. Mm-hmm. And that might be because I see following Jesus really as a, a le- legitimate cross to bear. Mm-hmm. You know, it really is hard to to just keep going, you know. And I think as the culture progresses and degenerates, <laughs> that it's going to be continually harder to not only stay faithful um, privately, but to communicate faithfulness yeah. and to exhort people to be faithful and obedient to Jesus. And so the, I think that's what I connect with is when I see people just unwilling to waver. It's just like, no, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a be with them. You can, you can throw me in the lion's den. You can throw me uh, in the fire, but we're not gonna bow down to you, sir. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, that gets me going every time. Yeah, I, for me, I think it's that. It's they suffered mm. and yet they stood firm. Mm-hmm. There's something about watching someone who's walking through the fire and saying Jesus is enough. The waves are not going to overcome. Mm-hmm. The fire will not burn. And seeing it lived out, and you say, "Oh wow," you know. Mm-hmm. I want to be like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I I want to be, you know, I think of Johnny Erickson Tata. Oh, yeah. Just, Mm -hmm. and and yet she was so real. Mm -hmm. I mean, clearly she didn't want to be paralyzed. Mm -hmm. 
at age 17 and spend her life, you know, as a quadriplegic. But she has lived a life saying my goal is to honor and glorify God Mm -hmm. in what he's given me. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I think there are certain lessons um, that we learn best from people who have suffered Mm -hmm. because we're, we we know it's real. Mm -hmm. There's no, oh yeah, I'm saying Jesus is great and all this stuff. Yeah. It's coming from a depth of experience. Mm that I can just listen to and say, Jesus, make me more like that. Because I feel so soft (laughs) and so weak. Mm. And the one good thing, I think that I look at them and I think they would all say, I was soft and weak too. Mm -hmm. He was strong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's hopeful to me. Yeah, because I I think, I'm sure what's consistent in all of the people uh, that we would call heroes is their, not even necessarily knowledge of scripture, but commitment to scripture. You know, because what else will keep anybody going or have a resolve or a desire to go out and teach um, and serve mm-hmm. in, in a variety of ways if it isn't what I know about God via the scriptures that he's provided for me. I, I think that's a, I don't think you can separate the two, you know? Mm-hmm. And so maybe that's another thing that like uh, connects me with them. It's like, oh, y'all were in y'all Bible. Yes. Yeah. And you you were there. You, you weren't just looking at these little devotionals for 17 no. seconds and calling it a day. I was yeah. showing Melissa, um, Sarah G. Stanley's letters last night. She was a teacher sent by the American Missionary Association right after the Civil War ended. And there's not even any pictures of this woman. Nobody mm-hmm. knows, you know, what she looked like. But her level of conviction of like, I truly believe that God has called me to this hard place. And not only will it be good for the people who I'm ministering to, but it'll be good for me because I'll grow mm-hmm. by being challenged and I'll grow by being in it. And it's so different from the success driven ways that we normally look at Christianity that we've sometimes been taught to look at Christianity through um, certain influencers of like, come over here so that you can have my curated life and it'll be wonderful. And, (laughs) you know, this woman was like, actually, I'm a black woman in the North who's literally going to go Mm. to the war-torn South to Mm. be a teacher and it's going to be really dangerous and I hope that I learn a lot. Mm. And that is an attitude that I don't know that I would have been able to have. I I hope that I would have been able to have, Mm. but goodness, just being, yeah, being open to God's call, even in hard things. Yeah, That's good because what I love about that, she was kind of doing this missionary work, mm-hmm. but she viewed what it would do to change her. Yes. She was humble. Maybe mm-hmm. that's a key ingredient too. Yeah. So just a real humility that the work I'm going to do, yes, she was hopeful that mm-hmm. it would save lives and that people would come to the Lord through the work she was doing, but she also recognized it would save her life in mm-hmm. a way, like that she mm-hmm. would be changed by the work she was doing, yeah. not just, I'm coming in as the hero. Right. She didn't view herself as a hero. No, she viewed all. herself as someone who needed to be changed by the gospel that she was giving to people. Mm-hmm. And that's a beautiful yeah sounds amazing. like we're describing people that just live like jesus yeah look like jesus <laughs> the more you look like jesus the more you're one of our spiritual hello heroes. yes yeah okay. yeah all right so every week on let's talk before we go we talk about one of our favorite things this week i want to know what is your favorite genre of movie? Probably but, documentary or historical drama, honestly. I thought you were gonna, I was going to be like horror. It's horror film, right? No. Nah, <laughs> I used to I used to love uh scary movies until um I got older and they started to scare me differently. Mm. And I said to myself, "Why am I doing this? Like what what value is there for me to go home and want all the lights on and now my bill is high?" That that's just <laughs> that don't make sense. Um but yeah, I just enjoy learning and so i think any any documentary or movie that offers like some history and not even history like you know 1600s mm-hmm. it could be like me and melissa were talking about earlier the documentary on netflix about the challenger mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. That's enjoyable for me um, to just find out about stuff that's done well. Yes. If it's raggedy, I don't, yes. don't want to watch it. That's my exact same one. So that's why I was like, man. I'm sorry. Mine. Mine's definitely historical, though. I love watching something that tells me something I didn't know, mm-hmm. like Apollo 13. I loved mm-hmm. that movie because I'm like, oh, my goodness. That's how did these movie. guys make it home? Or October Sky. But I also love Hidden Figures. Oh, I love October mm-hmm. Sky. Because, you know, when you're watching Hidden Figures, it brings this image of you couldn't use the bathroom. Mm-hmm. You had to walk like a mile to go to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it helps you experience it in a different way or Schindler's List. Yeah. Like when 
you know, it's black and white. I don't know if you've seen it. And the little girl in the pink. We had to in high school. Yeah, you know, in the pink dress. That's the only color. Oh, the red coat? Yes, the red coat. Yep. Or, you know, and it just, it makes you feel history mm-hmm. in a way that a textbook can't. Mm-hmm. So I'm a, I'm a huge fi- fan of historical. What are you going to say? History teacher. I was going to say Hamilton. <laughs> Here I go. Um... <laughs> I like romantic comedies, <laughs> rom coms, like historical romance, anything that's like I love you, I've always loved you. I'm like, yes. So notebookish. Yeah, or that's Jane Austen. Yeah, I don't like. I haven't seen Notebook in years, but like, um, yeah, the new Little Women mm-hmm. that just came out, totally Pride and Prejudice, Mr. Darcy. Walking which one that do you field. like best? Which which I one? like the new one better. And here's my justification, because everybody who's ever disagreed with me has never read the book before watching the movies. And I did. The BBC version? I read the book first. I don't know. So what we're talking my opinion about. gets to be right because I read the book first. Okay. I don't know what to say. But I do like the BBC version. But yeah, like uh, Emma, all those, yeah, like they're great. Just yeah, the cornier, the better. One of my ninth graders is like, Mrs. Holmes, I'm so glad that you recommended the faults in our stars. I cried so hard. <laughs> it's just like, why am I doing this You're to children? So precious. <laughs> it's so bad, but that's what i like sorry it's okay god made us all different (laughs) well thanks for listening to this episode of let's talk on our next episode we'll be talking about the holiness of god uh we hope you'll listen and subscribe through apple Podcasts, through spotify or wherever you like to get your podcast you can check out other shows from the gospel coalition podcast network at tgc.org forward slash podcast the gospel coalition supports the church in making disciples of all nations by providing resources that are trusted and timely, winsome and wise, and centered on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hey.